Hi there, it's the English Picker here. These are my picking finds for Sunday the 5th of August 2012. First of all, I uh, just want to start off saying never underestimate the power of word of mouth. Uh, someone who I know uh, bumped into some of my videos online and she went, oh well, we've got some uh, couches that I'm throwing away if you want them. So we uh, got these for free. Uh, they're kind of Urkel style um, desperately need of reupholstering uh, there you can see they're made out of oak really nice patina on the wood and uh, yeah sh should should do well on them uh, got them from nothing which is very gracious of her so might put them on eBay but probably most likely I'll put them in a local auction house and uh, see how they go but yeah two seater and two single seats should do should do well with those really uh, but yeah, these are the things I've got here. I've got some jewellery, some coins, a bit of gold and some silver and some computer games. Now, I said to myself that I wouldn't buy any more computer games and I really should stop buying them because actually I'm not really making much money buying them but these were cheap so I couldn't say no. We've got uh, Xbox, uh, Need for Speed Underground, Xbox 360, that was a pound, really clean. PlayStation 3, Gran Turismo 5, that was £1.50. Again, nice clean copy. Then I've got these two here, they're for the um, Master System. Uh, we've got Asterix, um, Sega Master System, with manual and cassette in there. Oh, cassette kind of thing, just there. Uh, then we've got Back to the Future as well. So they were 50p for the two. So. I couldn't say no, really. I mean, I'll probably take them to the local um, a bit sort of vintage uh, computer game shop and she'll give me a couple of pounds a piece rather than faffing about on eBay. Okay, I'll do the costume jewellery first. The quick tip here, um, I always find that if you find a bit of gold or silver at a store, it's always a good idea to bundle it together with a piece of costume jewellery. Um, that way, people, f if you just present them with a piece of gold or a gold coloured item, they immediately, I think the price goes up, so if you bundle it together with something that's costumey, I think they think you're buying it as a piece rather than as to scrap it, so it's always a good idea to do that, I find. Little tip that I got off Silver Picker. So, got these bits, got a little thing here, I bought this because I thought it could be silver, but I don't think it is, I think it's plated, but, you know, not too bad, That so that probably worked out in the bundle of about 10p. So, got a little cameo, 25p, friend buys cameos off me. Uh, got a load of these charms, some are Mark 95. Um, they're the kind of knockoffs of the um, the charm bracelets you get, the branded charm bracelets. Um, she only wanted a pound for all of them, so probably going to scrap the two at the bottom there, and then the rest I'll sell myself at the flea market when I do it. Uh, it's interesting pendant here it's a plated chain and then it's got like a copy of a the back of a victorian probably sixpence on there so that was about 20p so i bundled it in with the others got a spoon here uh silver plated should be able to make something out of it, it, was, it probably worked out about 50p a lot of these i got in big bundle deals so it's hard to say um got here a gold tone bracelet with uh some american Charms on them. I'm just going to check the dates in case I haven't got them. The wheat pennies and early memorials, and then we've got a 1954 uh, nickel, Jefferson nickel. Uh, paid 50p for that, so um, just on the chance that I needed one of the coins, really. But you know, should be okay. Also, with that bundled in, um, she threw in this, which was a, a, a cartwheel penny. Uh, I always like these. This is from 1797. So um, I might do a giveaway soon with some of those because they are really nice nice things and they're an ounce of copper as well, so so that's pretty good. Um, okay, I'll do the coins in a bit, but on to the jewellery. Uh, picked up some bits of broken jewellery uh, here. They've got this nice turquoise mounted thing. This was um, 25p uh, in with something else, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, and it's broken off there and it blatantly says 925 there but it was in with a load of broken watches so I don't think the guy really cared to be honest in with that I also got this it's a little silver ring uh, it's marked 925 really obviously just there 
Uh, Marks and Spencer's job, it's you know, uh, it's pretty dull, and I'll probably scrap it. There's nothing too special about it. Uh, so for 50p for those two, uh, this weighs 5.5 grams. So you know, pretty good. Uh, nearly three quid there, and then whatever this scraps for, probably take out the stones and whatnot. 50p picked up this little child's sort of ring, heart ring. Um, it would scrap for about 75p to a pound, so I'll probably try and sell it as is. For another store for a pound, I got this ring. Uh, got it cheap because it's bent out of shape. It's marked on the inside sterling silver. Uh, it would scrap for two pound fifty. That would so I could bend it back into shape. It's quite a nice piece. Then for 25p, I got this little silver bracelet. That'll scrap for about £1 to £1.20, something like that. Now, it may seem I'm faffing about all these little bits, but cumulatively, they do add up, so that's good. Got this here. It's a little, some kind of charm thing with a clasp that's got bent out of shape. It, it is marked on the clasp. Let's see if I can get that for you. Just there, 95 and it's attached to the charm. This weighs eight grams, so I pay ten p for it. So um, it's four quid's worth of scrap there. For twenty p, I got this single earring here. Might make it into a pendant and put it on a silver snake chain, but I'll probably just scrap it. It's um, I haven't weighed it, but it's you know th three or four grams probably. So for twenty p, it's pretty good. Picked up this very tarnished chain here. It's all knotted into a ball uh, for fifty p. I haven't weighed it, but you know there'll be a couple of quids worth of scrap there. I'll I'll probably scrap that. It's, it's not particularly great. Uh, then these these are really nice. Um, they're marker seat clip-on earrings made in West Germany, uh, which dates them to sort of anywhere between sort of the fifties and the seventies. Um, marked sterling silver, no stones missing. So I'll probably try and sell them in my antiques cabinet. They're they're really nice actually. So. Um, They'll do well. Okay, I'll do the coins in a bit. So I'll go on to uh, the gold. I got quite a bit of gold this week, which I'm very happy about. This gold chain here I got from the same place that I got um, the um, um, this ring here, just here, this one. So I bundled it together, and I also got this piece over here. So it was a big bundle lot. Uh, as well as some of the earrings up there, which I'll show you. It was all knotted up again. Uh, the guy knew it was gold, um, because after I bought it, he goes, oh, there's all my gold gone. Uh, it weighs 1.1 grams, and I will have got it for a, the equivalent of a pound. So that's brilliant. Mark 375 at the top, which is nice. Then this is funny. I went to a store, I was looking through a jewellery box there, and the woman goes, oh... Uh, you know, it's all odds and sods in there, and there's no gold and silver, so you know, you're not going to find any of that there, mate. I said, Oh, no, I'm just having a little look, you know, um, for a bit of fun, pick up some bits. I goes, Oh, how much for this bit? She goes, Oh, that there's only one of them. Go, oh, give us 20p for it. And lo and behold, it's marked 375 on the butterfly and the uh, post, and so it's gold. So I was walking away, chuckling to myself, thinking. You know, thinking actually, the people who say they've got no gold and silver, they're the best people to look for because if they have, they don't realise it and it'll be cheap. Uh, picked up these from another seller. Uh, she said, oh, you know, someone bought me them as a present uh, and I haven't even got pierced ears, so they've never been worn. I thought they were silver. I paid um, I paid 10p for them, which was really good. This car boot sale, I went to three and this was really cheap. Uh, got them back, looked, and it says 375, so they're 9 carat white gold. Cumulatively together, taking into account the stones, they weigh about a gram. So 10, 10 11 quid's worth there, which is brilliant. Then onto these. I saw these earlier on in the, the day when I got to one of them, and I went back to it later in the day. Initially, the woman wanted £6 for them. Um, then she said they weren't marked, but having got back, they are marked. 9 carat gold. Um They've, they've got a fairly substantial backing to them there. And um, I went back to her at the end of the day when she was packing up and I said, oh, would you take three quid for them? And I wish I'd said lower because she, you know, shot a hand out and said, yeah, go on, give us the money. So I got a nice little set of nine carat gold earrings. I'll sell these as a piece. Um, they probably will scrap for about five or six pounds, but I will try and sell them as a piece. They've got little jet bits at the bottom there. 
which is nice. And my nicest gold find of the day was from the guy I've got a big bundle from. I will have paid four pounds for these in the deal equivalently. Uh, they're a lovely set of. Let's see if we can focus. There we go. Screw back earrings with what I think is amethyst. Big honking great big thing of amethyst. I can't weigh them because the stones are chunky, but you can see it says nine carat there. He knew they were gold. He knew, you know, that, but obviously didn't know the value. I mean, he sold, like, motor parts and stuff, so they look Victorian. Uh, fairly, quite a lot of gold in them uh, there. So for four quid, I couldn't say no. So I'm going to, I'm not going to scrap these. I'm going to try and sell them as a piece, and I reckon I can get between 25 and 30 pounds for those easily, um, as they are in my antiques cabinet. If push comes to shove, I can scrap them, and I'll probably get about 20 quid for them, but that's my favourite find of the day. Okay, onto the coins. Uh, picked up some cheap coins. Um, got a nice little mint state Netherlands coin. It's made out of nickel, but they're often beat to hell. So it's nice to find a mint state. All these were 10 each. Got a 1968 Canadian nickel with like a lamination fault. It hasn't got the the finish the on that side. It's like a copper finish. Bit weird, really. So not too sure on that. Pretty cool. Then I got really heavily worn straight settlement Queen Victoria coin. Uh, they can go for good money in high grade, but that's just to make up the numbers really, because it was ten for a pound. Then I got some wheat pennies, uh, running from the forties through to the late thirties. Just some date fillers, which is cool. So the next thing I got was this eighteen ninety two silver, sterling silver threepence. Uh, pretty warm condition, but I haven't got the date. Paid a pound for it, which is top end, really, but, you know, pretty good. And then the last thing of the day, uh, there was a coin, sort of, he wasn't a dealer, but he sold coins, bought and sold coins in his spare time. He's actually a bus driver, and he's apparently found 14 of the undated 20 pence pieces and sold them for £50 pounds each. So I've been looking for ages and I haven't found one yet. But... Uh, he got this. He got loads of his prices are so expensive on some things, especially arrow coins. He got this. I think he dropped the ball on it though. Various coins, da, 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 ten pounds. I said I had a quick flick through. And I said, "Oh, would you take eight? It was the end of the day. He went, "Yeah, go on then." So I'll show you what I got. Brilliant deal, really. Uh, nice condition. 1860 halfpenny, Victorian halfpenny. Uh, An 1897, quite nice condition. Uh, penny, Victorian penny. This is nice. It's an 1822, I think it is a half penny as well. I uh, No, it might be a farthing. Um, let's compare it to the size of the half penny. No, it's a farthing. Uh, 1822 farthing. That is um, a George IV, bull's head. Um, then we've got an 1841 Victoria farthing. Another 1841 bizarrely. Then we've got a uh, William the Fourth, eighteen thirty-five farthing, in really nice condition. So that's okay. We've got a bit of silver now. We've got a really nice condition, eighteen eighty-seven silver threepence, uh, jubilee head. Then we've got nineteen twenty-six, and then we've got some fifty percent silver ones there, thirty-eight, thirty-eight, and forty, and a nineteen thirty-three and a nineteen twenty-six, which is cool. Then these were the great, really good ones. Quite a warm condition, 1928, 50% silver half crown. It's like 14 grams in that. Uh, then uh, 1944 Scottish Florian, 50% silver. Then this was a real nice one. It's an 1826, I think it is a sixpence. 1826, unfortunately there's a honking great big scratch across the face. So annoying when you get nice coins with big scratches in them, but you know, still a nice coin. I'll probably end up keeping that because with the scratch, you can't resell it. But yeah, real nice on that side as well. So uh, I think I did really well for eight pounds on those coins. So yeah, that's what I found this week some free stuff, nice bit of free furniture, and a heap of gold, some silver, some coins. So just get out there and get picking. So uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And catch me on Facebook, give me a like, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, this seems completely moronic to me. When answering a reply, a uh, YouTuber says, Do you know you have your own YouTube channel? No, really? I, I didn't even know that. You know, I've done hundreds of videos. I, 
I, n I never even realised I had my own YouTube videos and YouTube channel. Crazy.